squats today. Uh, Brooke and I are sharing a barbell. Um, I, I haven't squatted like back squats oh, since the total of the CrossFit Games. So this is going to be very interesting. A lot lighter than what I hit that day. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, just getting under a little bit of weight, um, especially considering, you know, we're really just trying to get the body moving again. And so um, seeing where we're at, like no pressure whatsoever, um, focusing on technique. So with this one, you know, really focusing on driving those knees out, staying super stable through the foot. And then, um, you know, when you're in that bottom, staying nice and braced and then driving up out of it trying to pretend that there's paper underneath my footing and like tearing that paper in half essentially. So um, we're gonna be doing working up. Honestly, there is a few percentages being thrown around that Shane would love us to hit, but today I'm just gonna go off feel. Um, whether I hit those percentages, I don't really care. Um, I have my knee sleeves on and my lift is on, so I'm just bracing myself for uh, my joints to just be like, what's just happened? We're about to start our back squats. Atiyah hasn't actually squatted since the uh, CrossFit Games total. Um, I guess talking about the CrossFit total, I think if you guys want to know about it, it went to plan on, on the workout itself. The whole concept behind that was, uh, sorry, the strategy behind that was just to to feel the feel, feel the field, feel the field. Try that one. Um, so the, given that there was only four other athletes, Tia could really control the atmosphere, or control the load she needed to be on the bar. She's confident with the back squat particularly, so she just wanted to make sure she created a small buffer from the other competitors, and then built on that, um, built on the next movement. So the next movement was a strict press. She actually, in fact, she knew that Terry Pierce had a phenomenal strict press, but knowing that she had a buffer already from her back squat, would then her, allow her to then concentrate on her deadlift. Um, and then it came to the deadlift component. We knew that Brooke had a phenomenal deadlift. However, we knew that we had that buffer already created from the back squat. So that we will allow, it allowed us to control and then pick the weights accordingly based off the field. Now, when I reflect on that thinking, was that the best strategy? I still believe it was because that allowed us to minimize exertion or going too far in the red or beyond our 1RM capabilities. And that way we could, sorry, when I look back at it, percentage-wise, that was about 95% of Tia's 1RM back squat. She matched her strict press, which is a phenomenal win there, and her deadlift uh, it wasn't it wasn't a PR on the day. So you know, in order for us to control that total, was phenomenal. Could she have PR on the deadlift if she needed to? I think we'd just have to rewire. She'd just probably have to fire herself up to PR in the back uh, in the deadlift and the back squat particularly. I think that would have been capable, but, but knowing the numbers relatively well the rest of the field, I think we didn't have to, to go in that mind space. And I think the, the fact that there was no crowd either, it played better knowing that you didn't have to utilize the crowd to amp her up to go for a PR either. Does that make sense? Um, the total of the games was really interesting um, after just like thinking a little bit about it um, when I look back at the the field that we had I was set in such a great advantage point where I was the last person to lift and I knew my competitor in that particular event was going to be booked 
so all I had to worry about was what she was doing and I just needed to outlift her. Uh, obviously knowing she has a phenomenal deadlift, uh, she's got a very strong back squat as well as a strict press. Um, if I could stay ahead of her on the back squat and the strict press, then if she needed to just pull out a Hail Mary when it came to a deadlift, I needed to ensure that I was like that far ahead of her in terms of the weight. And, um, you know, I consider myself pretty strong across all of those movements. So I definitely didn't need to worry too much about going like for PRs or anything like that. My, um, my whole objective was to literally go off what Brooke was doing. So like, very rarely do you ever want to uh, venture out into your competitor's lane. You obviously want to be aware of what everyone else is doing. But in that particular uh, event, I literally played Brooke's game um, as much as she hates that. But um, I, I needed to do that in order to win because I could have gone, stayed in my own lane, gone completely um, over and beyond what I needed to and fatigued myself for the rest of the weekend. Or I could have made some serious mistakes where Brooke could have actually won and beaten me as well. So I needed to just play, play Brooke's game, be smart, put my ego aside, and, uh, and just really uh, read what she's doing and go off what she did. So, um, you know, if it was anything like 2018, it would have been very, very different because I, I couldn't see what Brooke was doing back then. I couldn't see what my competitors were doing because we literally had our own lane and it was such a big field. There was too many people to focus on while focusing on yourself as well. But um, all in all, a really great event and uh, something that, you know, I hope they keep testing because it just shows how much we can keep improving. Right, so squats are done, guys. So we actually just started our our 10 week weightlifting cycle or strength cycle. So this is day one. We're just going through a bit of a testing phase now. Um, if you want more information, in fact, uh, I'm sure we can attach or add the uh, details for our site, for our, for our um, eBooks, which are available on our site and proven. But again, we're on day one of that. I'm sure we'll have some sore bodies tomorrow, but hopefully in 10 weeks from now, when we're closer to the open, we'll be right where we need to be. I think depending on where, what your goals are and where you are, so for, like, I like to consider these guys veteran athletes in the sense that they know what, what is required from them in the open. Uh, I would like them to be around comfortable to hit their, uh, two R, their two RM, so essentially 90% of their one RM multiple times. Um, not necessarily a PR, but if we're fluctuating between, sorry, if they're capable of hitting close to their one RM, that would be phenomenal strength uh, obtained. Our goal is actually after the open that we want to start challenging ourselves to hit that one RM or sorry, hit beyond that one RM. I was telling Tia earlier and in fact Brooke and earlier is that is that I'm more intrigued about what your three RM is and your five RM is than your one RM. Essentially if you look at the data or the workouts that have been applied to CrossFit games and, and any sanction event, oh someone nearly tripped up on their box jump. But anyway, if you see if you see um, how much is done, I've just lost my groove. Sorry. But if you see how many competitions require you to go to 1RM uh, in a spectrum of percentage, it's not really that much. Uh, if you do see that they generally test multiple times of a, of a heavy load, which will, con which will be related more to your 5RM and 3RM. And, and training that also will help complement your 1RM too. So I'm conscious of all of those factors as well. Alrighty, so we just uh, got done with some accessories. We did our back squats, which uh, I think we only worked up to about 195, so nothing too crazy heavy. We focused more on volume and uh, quality reps, and then um, we finish off with some accessories, so some dumbbell bench press and some glute ham raises. So really trying to fire up and deload those hamstrings and, uh, and glutes, as well as um, you know priming the shoulders a little bit, uh, isolating each arm and shoulder joint with the dumbbells. Nothing crazy, we only went to like 50 pounds. Um, and it's just a great combination, you know, you're focusing on your, ch uh, your chest and then going into your lower body for accessories, you know. I think for most of you that have been following along on this journey, you all know how important accessories are to Shane and I and how 
much accessories we imp, imp, um, include into our proven programming. Uh, it keeps us healthy, it keeps the longevity of the athlete, and it just really allows you to focus on movement patterns. So, um, you know, practice what you preach. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed our afternoon session. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below what you want to see. Uh, I cannot wait to share with you what's coming up in the near future. But aside from that, have a good day, and I'll catch you in the next one.